Hello everyone, Stepan here. Round 9 of the US Chess Championship brought a lot of exciting games, unfortunately many of them were draws and uh, this one I'm about to show you was played between Akobian and Wesley So. And I think there's uh, there's been an astonishing positional idea played by uh, Varuzi and Akobian in this game and it's a lesson that uh, could benefit a lot of a lot of us and something that most people wouldn't even consider but it's actually an often used uh, positional idea to to get get a better position or or a drone position. And before this round, Wesley Saw was at 5 points, uh, trailing half a point behind uh, Fabiano Caruana, so he was in a good position to stay on top of the leaderboard. Varuzi Nakobian was at 3.5 after 8, so not such, a good, uh, not such a good score. And in uh, yesterday's round 9, uh, Caruana played uh, Hikaru Nakamura for, for let's say, to, to secure victory, because if he'd won against Nakamura, then he would probably stay in first place, but they actually drew and Nakamura was better for the most of the game. And Sam Shankland, who was also trailing by half a point behind Caruana, uh, defeated his opponent convincingly, so now he's the sole uh, leader in clear first with six and a half, and, uh, and Caruana is at six. Uh, so Sam Shankland could be the sensation of this tournament, defeating the great three Wesley So, Caruana and Nakamura. Uh, to, to win the US Championship. But let's get to this game. Uh, in this game, Barakobian had white pieces. He opened with pawn to d4. We have knight f6, c4, g6, knight to c3, and this could still be the king's Indian with bishop to g7. But Wesley so goes for the Grunfeld defense with pawn to d5. And this is now... Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with the Grunfeld, but the point of this position is that you are giving White everything he wants in the center in order to be able to destroy it later on. This is a hypermodern defense, which was very much frowned upon until uh, the, the middle of the 20th century, I would say. And before that, it was considered dubious and, in fact, losing for Black, but it gives, uh, it gives Black great attacking chances later on. The main move in this position would be c takes d5 and after knight takes d5, e4, knight takes c3, b takes c3 and you can already see that white has a great pawn center but after bishop g7, bishop to c4, black immediately strikes with c5 and now it's unclear what uh, what uh, what the position evaluation is and black actually has great chances. Of course this is the main position so it's been heavily analyzed but you can see a few tactical problems. The bishop on the diagonal, the pawn structure is very weak, Why uh, black can uh, attack it once again with knight to c6 so the position is equal. That's the most common move. The second most common move after uh, d5 is knight to f3 and after bishop to g7 white can go for either queen to b3, c takes d5, bishop to g5 or pawn to e3 so there are a lot of possibilities in the Grunfeld but after d5 uh, Varuzan Akobian doesn't go for the two most common lines, he plays bishop to f4 which is a quite rare attack in the Grunfeld, it's called the Brinkman attack and uh, it usually leads to white being a pawn up temporarily and if he wants to keep the pawn he, he has to accept a very volatile double-edged position. Uh, to bishop to f4, Wesley so reacts with the most common move, bishop g7. If you, are un uh, if you are unsure what to do in the Grunfeld, always play bishop g7 and castle and you can't go much wrong with that. e3, uh, now securing the, the c4 pawn, it's no longer hanging, c5. And this is now a position uh, that resembles the Tarash and uh, some positions of the Queen's Gambit declined if black should play e6. Uh, but the main move is uh, d takes c5 and now queen to a5. And from this position on, white usually continues with rook to c1, and after dc4, bishop c4, white castles, black castles, knight to f3, queen takes c5, and bishop to b3. The position is equal, and uh, the pawn structure is completely symmetrical, as you can see. Uh, both sides have two identical pawn islands. And uh, if you look uh, far ahead uh, into the game, this will most likely end in a draw, even though this only applies to super grandmaster and grandmaster level, of course, on lower, le on lower levels everything is possible, but when Wesley Saw and Dacobian are, are playing a symmetrical pawn structure, is uh, halfway to a draw actually so uh, Varakobian probably wanted to avoid that with white pieces he wanted to win so to queen to a5 he reacted with queen to a4 check and this now forces a trade of queens and wins a pawn for for white because after queen a4 knight a4 you can see that white still has all eight of his pawns black has seven pawns and it's not that easy for black to regain his uh, his missing pawn his pawn down but uh, he has better development, you can see that white's king is still stuck in the center, the king side is completely undeveloped, the knight is misplaced on a4, the, the, the extra pawn is actually very weak, and, uh, and black has actually regained a lot of uh, central control and white relinquished his strong pawn center. So there's compensation, but a pawn is a pawn, and uh, black still has to uh, 
prove his uh, his uh, his advantage because of the material. Now bishop to d7 is played attacking the knight, knight to c3, knight to e4, now knight takes d5 is played, temporarily two pawns up, uh, knight to a6 attacking the c5 pawn, we have f3 chasing the knight away, and now knight e takes c5, and Varakobian plays the only move which uh, saves the material advantage, he castles queenside. And this was now promising a very, a very good exciting game. <laughs> Uh, because uh, when uh, when two players castle on the opposite sides of the board, and of course when uh, when when White's king is this misplaced uh, on c1 and open to attacks along the c file and along this diagonal, that then in the hands of Wesley saw this is a very powerful weapon, and uh, I was looking forward to the game when I saw this position. Wesley continues with e6. Uh, knight to c3, solidifying, and now bishop c3, b c3, and uh, Wesley so gave up his strongest attacking piece, which might not have been the best idea, even though it uh, significantly weakened White's pawn structure, but he will, he will now no longer have such a huge ed edge in the attack, and now uh, Varakobian has a slight advantage. Now this extra pawn is actually an extra pawn, and uh, you could imagine a move such as bishop to e6, uh, getting in the middle of black's position, uh, the rook is okay on the d file. As soon as white manages to untangle his bishop and knight from the king side, he will be okay. So plans such as knight to h3, knight to g5 are okay. Uh, let's say bishop to uh, d3 and uh, knight d3, rook d3, knight to e2 are okay. So there are a lot of plans to develop the pieces. And as soon as white manages that, he will be much better. Here Wesley continues with pawn to f6, preparing the move e5, e4, making room for the bishop in anticipation of the move e5. And e5, bishop e3. And of course, if Var didn't play uh, e4, then the bishop would now be stuck on on, uh, on g3, and it would have to waste another tempo to move to f2. And now the e4 pawn is serving much more purpose than, than if the bishop wasted the tempo to come to f2. Rook to c8. Now, for the first time, putting pressure on the c4 pawn. Uh, and the game continues with rook to d5. And this move is, uh, if you ask the engines, a very bad move and it loses all of the advantage for, for white and in fact black is, according to the engines, much better. However, I believe that this is uh, what engines still lack in their in their knowledge base and they simply don't understand positions uh, the way the humans do and I think this move was extraordinary and, and I think that was the, the best idea in the position. The engines actually recommended h4 and after h5 knight to e2 trying to develop knight a4, king to c2 solidifying and after rook takes c4 bishop a7 of course white is still a pawn up but uh, would you rather, rather play this position with all of black's pieces around your king on, or this position which is perfectly safe and I believe that var made, made a good decision to play rook to d5. Of course, the positional idea of this move is to eventually give up the exchange, and this is why I uh, was very excited to, to watch this middle game, because this is uh, what you see often in games, that players will sacrifice an exchange or even a piece uh, to, get, uh, to get an advanced pass pawn and the blockade uh, on one color complex, in this case uh, the light squares, and it makes it very hard for the opposite player to, to break through, and the, the fact that he is an exchange up doesn't mean almost anything if the rooks aren't active and if the rooks don't have any open files. So now we have bishop to e6, Wesley so threatens to take the rook, and of course uh, Varakobian simply ignores that, he plays rook to, uh, king to d2, we have king e7, knight to h3, finally preparing to develop, b6, solidifying the knight, bishop to e2, now the development has finished, finally, and the knight is preparing to reroute via, sorry, f2 and d3, and now bishop takes d5 was played, and of course c takes d5, undoubling pawns, and you could argue that, uh, that this bishop and this pawn are much stronger than the rook on h8, and I think uh, most people would rather have white in this position, and I will just turn on the engine to show you what the engines think. You can see the bar at the right side of the board, which says that black is almost winning. This is uh, minus one and a half uh, going closer to minus two. So if you ask the engines, this is completely winning for black. And I believe that uh, there are a few people in this world who could win this position with black. Of course, uh, the, the most ro probable result is a draw, because if white pushes too hard, uh, his uh, material disadvantage will be amplified and of course if the pawns and pieces get exchanged the rook will be much stronger than the bishop but in this case uh, with the pawn structure disclosed black uh, is in no position to risk anything because the d pawn could uh, soon become a menace and queen 
And now we have knight to c7, a very good plan by, by Wesley. So, of course, he's uh, using the, the weaknesses that VAR just created. He's transferring the knight to c7, to e8, and then to d6. Past pawns should be blockaded and put under lock and key, as Aron Nimcovic would say. We have knight to f2, getting the knight into the center. Knight to e8, Wesley continues his plan. Knight to d3, and now knight takes d3, bishop d3, knight to d6. And now knight to c4 check is threatened, getting rid of white's bishop pair, but that doesn't really mean anything in this position, so uh, Varakobian wasn't worried. We have a4, knight c4 check, bishop c4, rook c4. And once again, if, if you turn on the engine, you can see that black is supposed to be winning, but how? I mean, uh, I put this position on my board and, the and I tried to find a winning plan for black, but I just couldn't. Of course, I'm nowhere near uh, good enough to, to, to judge this position uh, like a player or like an engine, but I just tried to get an idea and think of what I would play in the game and it was so hard to break through and I actually didn't manage. I drew myself uh, in, the, in this middle game. Uh, here, uh, the game continued with rook to a1, of course, Svar has to defend the, the pawn, rook h to c8 doubling, rook to a3, and now everything is defended. You have breakthroughs uh, on the on the king side if white makes a mistake, but the 5 on 4 or the 4 on 4 uh, pawn structure makes it impossible to black, uh, for black to break through if white doesn't blunder, so there's nothing here. Uh, Wesley does play f5, trying to break through, but Var just ignores that king to d3, and now, of course, if the c8 rook ever moves, the c4 rook is hanging king to d7 h3 h5 and with the move h3 var actually blocked the whole structure so there's no breakthroughs now for for wesley and in this position the engines finally realized that the position is equal and that it's probably a draw but that the only side that could win is actually white we have h4 now uh, rook 4 to c7 rook to b3 and now a bit of repetition and they agreed to a draw and of course uh, it's uh, it's unclear what black should do, and uh, one fact that is clear is that uh, black ever allows uh, moves his rooks from the c file and allows the moves c4 c5 with the rook on on uh, b5, let's say. And if he allows uh, if he allows Varakobian to exchange this pawn for this pawn, then the d5 pawn will be too strong to stop, and perhaps white could even win this position. So. Of course, Wesley so went for a draw and he was content with that. What was amazing about this game is how VAR uh, approached the opening. He didn't go for, for the drawing line with uh, with the similar pawn structure. He actually went for the queen exchange, which offered him, which offered him a fighting game with a, with a pawn up temporarily. And he managed to save this pawn until the middle game where he, where he gave up an exchange for, for this pawn. And he was... Uh, I think he played this game very well and it's unfortunate for both players that they couldn't score a win or a full point but that's how it goes they i think they both played well and they both played a perfect game and i was very happy to see this game and to analyze it and i hope you enjoyed it too uh, thanks very much for watching and uh, i hope you got something from this positional uh, brilliancy by wesley so and vara kobian and stay tuned for more chess thanks very much bye